Is the J-Tips and Saucony Grid Azura 2000 a contender for shoe of the year? I'd say it is. What's up, y'all? It's Daniel, your shoe and today we're talking about one of the wildest colorway collaborations to release in recent memory. It's not a Jordan, it's not an Adidas, it's not a Puma, it's not a Reebok, it's a Saucony. And if you're one of those that sleep on Saucony because Jordan didn't swoosh in it or Adidas doesn't soccer with it, you're missing out. And you've probably already missed out on this shoe, but if you can grab it, I highly recommend it because this shoe is going to be considered one of the top 10 by the end of the year, I'm not gonna guarantee it, but I can tell you for sure it's gonna be on my list. J-Tips is a multi-hyphenate creator hailing from the Bronx, New York City. He merges his creativity, style, and love for pop culture to create fresh and innovative products. From his clothing line, Save Your Worldwide, to his music. J is a leader in headwear design known for his one-of-a-kind colorways and his sold-out collaboration with retailers like Hat Club. The prolific creator has teamed up with Saucony for his first sneaker collaboration, a colorful take on the Saucony Grid Azura 2000, making one of his lifelong dreams come true. It borrows various elements from a bespoke Air Force One he designed in 2019, a one of one that was not an official collaboration with Nike, but was picked up by sneaker blogs at the time like it was. His Saucony features similar details like zebra print branding, floral panels, and a checkered board heel as a tribute to his favorite musician, the late Nipsey Hussle. The J-Tips and Saucony Grid Azura 2000 retails for 160 US American dollars and released exclusively in New York City on May 6th and received a wider release on May 25th. Now, when it comes to fit, I'm normally a size nine or nine and a half, depending on the sneaker brand and the silhouette. For Saucony, I go true to size, which is about a size nine for me. That's pretty consistent across all of the Sauconies. I don't have a wide foot. I'd say I have a normal size foot. I don't like a lot of lockdown in the midfoot and I like some wiggle room in the toe box. So having said all of that, I would just say whatever you normally get in a Saucony, specifically the Grid the Zero 2000, I'd say go for it because this fits me pretty much true to size. So, well, just go ahead and get what you normally get. When it comes to comfort, as you can see, it has those mesh panels on the lateral and medial side, as well as sporadically on the toe box, letting some air go through. So if you're in the hotter climates like I am here in Texas, you'll definitely appreciate it because you get a little wind on your feet if you're not wearing socks or wind on your socks maybe through your shoes uh, if you're wearing socks. But regardless, I think that's gonna add a little bit of comfort in terms of letting your dogs breathe. Now, in terms of actual comfort, I don't find Saucony to be nearly as comfortable as say Boost or React or a Zoom or anything like that, but the technology that they use is fairly comfortable. If you don't like something super squishy or bouncy, you're gonna like this. If you don't like something that's super hard and firm, you're gonna like this as well. It's kind of that Goldilocks. It's just right for those people that like a little bit of firmness, but a little bit of squish, a little bit of bounce, but not too much. So if you like that, then I'd say this shoe is definitely gonna be for you in terms of comfort. Now, as you saw, I laced the shoes with the gray rope laces and the shoe does come pre-laced with, well, both pairs of laces. As you can see, it has a purple set that's on the bottom half of the shoe, closer to the toe box. And then they have the gray portion up closer to the tongue. You really can't use both of them in that way because they're both sets of long length laces. I decided to go with the gray because I like the way the gray pops against all the other colors, but I can certainly see how someone might want to go purple on that. Doesn't really matter to me. Let me know in the comment section down below. Do you prefer the purple or what do you think about the gray? There are so many little touches on this shoe that I love so much. Remember who fronted. It's on the bottom heel on the medial side of the shoe. It's awesome. It's a little twinge. You have that similar writing on the box. It's a little bit more fleshed out. We've talked about the different floral patterns, the checkerboard. You have the Saucony logos and the inside of the shoe on the back of the heel. You also have Made by J Tips. And then of course you have so many colors on the shoe. On the bottom you have different shades of pink and peach with a light blue. And then your insoles have different stamping on them. You have the globe logo on one. You have the crown on the other with some writing uptown. And then on the right shoe on the tongue you have Saucony Worldwide. And on the left shoe on the tongue you have Savior Originals. In the spirit of transparency, at first I really wasn't about this shoe. Pictures were like, okay, that's fine. But when I saw it in hand, true to form, 
felt all the material, saw how just complex and intricate the design was, I knew I had to have that shoe. Shout out to Kickin' ATX who had the shoe in very, very limited qualities. Your boy was lucky enough to cop a pair, so uh, I'm so happy about it. I'd love to hear what you think about this collaboration. What you think about all the colors, the materials, the story behind it. Do you own any of J-Tips hats? Let's just make the comment section a big J-Tips party. Let's talk about all of that in the comment section down below. So to all of you out there, wherever you are, thanks for watching. Stay tuned and just chill. Till the next episode.